So now that filming's over for The Chosen Season 4, let's check in with the actors from this recent YouTube video from The Chosen to see what they thought about the season overall. They have some pretty good insights, so let's jump into this. Here we go. No spoilers? We have some tricks up our sleeves. You will love what you see on screen. It is our last day of filming, and as usual, it is bittersweet. <laughs> I don't think Dallas is I don't think there's any bitterness for Dallas <laughs> being a creator like creating the thing especially if it's as long as creating a TV show is very very time consuming it's very very tedious and there's a lot of annoying parts so I'm sure that he's very relieved uh, as he gets to the end of this that he has something created rather than he's doing the creation still because uh, you can kind of get locked in that cycle over and over and over again but to make it a tad sweeter, we're gonna ask the actors. What are you most excited for fans to see? More of Pilot's inner world. Sort of starting to see the different layers that he has and what he's being faced with. My yeah, I love that they introduced Pilot so early um, in The Chosen. Obviously, they could have introduced him even earlier. Um, but I love that they introduced him now because it gives us a great moment for us to look at Pilate, who is really this huge figure during the crucifixion and obviously the one that orders the crucifixion and torture and all of that. Um, it, it really gives us a good insight as to who he is and the people that are surrounding him. So I'm really looking forward for more stuff from Pilate, Claudia, Herod Antipas, Herodias, um, even Chusa, who we're going to apparently see uh, in season four as well. That's the husband of Joanna. So that should be really, really interesting to kind of see what's going on there. Favorite part has to be my scene with Joanna, Claudia and Joanna. It was just so beautiful to dig into and witness those two women together. Claudia and Joanna are standing up, elevated women, literally above the poor masses, but we're jealous. Yeah, this should be a really interesting scene, a scene that obviously is not biblical, but is um, it's going to be really interesting to see character development between Joanna and, and Claudia. Obviously, we don't know much about Pilate's wife, what happened with her, if she continued to have dreams, different things like that. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see how The Chosen kind of fills in those details and also how they develop Joanne as a character. Is she going to stick around for the long haul and be like this character that comes in and out uh, whenever Roman things are involved? Or is it just going to be for this season? Because her, really, her, her big moment here is uh, talking about John the Baptist and all that stuff because she's kind of associated with Machiris, at least in, um, <clears throat> you know, in The Chosen here. So... Obviously, her husband would have been a huge part of Herod's court, and she would have been part of that as well, but we don't know exactly what that would have looked like. But anyway, it, it'll be interesting to see how they develop the characters and what role they'll play in the upcoming seasons as well. Claudia is still dreaming. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting to see if there's more dream sequences to show us more like foreshadowing of the future. I didn't see any evidence of that in um, in the behind the scenes at all, but I guess we'll have to see if that's the case uh, coming up in season four. I'm excited for fans to really realize that Thaddeus is the real Judas and that <laughs> he frames Judas a chariot uh -huh. because Thaddeus is also known as Jude and Judas in scripture. Once you make that first cut into the stone, it can't be undone. It can't be undone. No, no, no. I'm most That's hilarious. <laughs> Obviously, Giovanni's like one of the sweetest, nicest people on the cast. Um, but <laughs> it's just funny. Like, imagine they did that in The Chosen where they hold, they're hiding Judas's uh, real identity and they're making you think it's this other Judas the whole entire time. That would have been a, a big brain move for sure, but it would have been super confusing as well. So, uh, yeah, that would have been hilarious. I'm excited for the fans to see the music, the song that we prepared. So which one is which? Is this the lyre or the lute? As a musician myself, getting to work with Dan and Matt, who I admire very, very much, that was a wonderful experience. And getting to work with first century instruments and the learning curve from guitar to a three string instrument that goes out of tune every take. It was super fun and unlike anything I've gotten to do, so I'm excited for people to see that. Yeah, that should be a lot of fun. I know a lot of the guys in the cast are musicians and they've worked with other things throughout. Um, so I'm interested to see how that was all put together and how it worked out for them. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited for some of those kind of um, moments that we're going to get in season four of these quiet sort of uh, really um, intimate moments, especially with this music and different things like that uh, for I think is what, what's going to be Hanukkah is what that's going to be for. So 
So right now, only 7.3 out of 10 people watching this video are subscribed to this channel. What's 0.33 of a man? So if you're one of them, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe right now. Number one, that's a huge help to us. All this content comes to you for free, both the show and the YouTube channel. So one way you can help us is when you subscribe, it lets YouTube know people are enjoying this channel, they're enjoying this content, and it puts it out in front of more eyes. Number two, it helps you. I'm very happy. Because if you hit the bell by the subscribe button, you're going to get notified every single time we drop something new yeah obviously that goes for this channel as well <laughs> um this is a brand new channel so we really need your help not only to subscribe and 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 to like and to comment but also just watch the videos we need watch hours on this on this channel in order for us to become a full-fledged kind of youtube channel so that would really really help us out if you could do that peter is here judas is here and peter judas friendship continues to you could just sit at him and just so much. <laughs> so there's a little bit of an insight there from Judas and Peter. Dallas is saying uh, Judas continues to try to be friends with Simon, and um, there seems to be maybe a little bit of like he looks up to Simon, he wants to be friends with him, but Simon maybe isn't fully uh, giving into that, or he's not fully you know wanting to have that relationship. Uh, so I do wonder how that will play out. I wonder if they will get closer or not. I wonder who who Judas will get close with as we get to the end of season five and season six, um, as the betrayal comes and the crucifixion, who is going to be the closest ones to Judas? Because we really haven't seen anybody be super close with him yet. The only person that's had like favorable words for him has been... Um, Matthew, right? When he appointed him the treasurer, he appointed him the, the money holder, basically. So I, I do wonder what that will look like um, for his relationships as we go forward, for sure. Of what Jelaine and I saw filmed on those last days, we can't even talk about. What are you looking forward to the most? For <laughs> it's interesting because he said most of what we saw filmed on those last days we can't talk about. And then all those images that he showed are no, nowhere near the last days of filming. <laughs> The last days of filming were all in Lazarus's house. Like Joanna wasn't here. This is weeks and weeks and weeks ago. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that that happened way before um, that they're talking about here, like saying as if it was the last week, but it's definitely not. The last week was almost all in Lazarus's house. Had to do primarily with with them being together in the house, most likely before. Um, the resurrection of Lazarus and the death of Lazarus. So, uh, yeah, none of this is like correlating here with the actual timeline of what we've seen from behind the scenes, at least as far as I know. For fans to see. Uh, well, I can't say, but I will say it is so good and it's so unexpected. The way they've chosen to write it and to shoot it, it's, it's going to be so beautiful. So she's talking about the death of John the Baptist here, no doubt. Um, because she's kind of worried about talking about it, but she didn't know at this point that they have already talked about it. <laughs> um, I think she's talking about the death of John the Baptist and how they shot it and how they went through with it. I think Joanna's pretty much only going to be in episode one of, of this season, uh, maybe sprinkled in throughout some other moments, but I think primarily she's going to only be in episode one, which is all going to be about John the Baptist, Machiris, <clears throat> I believe his birth, and his death uh, in the same episode. Uh, so it should be really interesting to see that for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm hyped on episode one, absolutely. What we can say is we saw some amazing one-on-one -on -one scenes. So yeah, so the two one-on-one -on -one scenes or the three one-on-one -on -one scenes that he's gonna talk about here are Mother Mary, um, in which we see her actually washing Jesus's hair. Then I think she actually comes to Bethany because of the the Shiva, the funeral for Lazarus, uh, and she's there with Jesus. And then we also get this scene, which is really interesting, of Judas and Jesus. And this is where we're going to start to see more of the decline of Judas. Now, we got a sneak peek of this even before they started shoot, shooting season four. There's a small excerpt of a script that I have that Dallas shared with us that has Judas and Jesus talking about money and how Judas is worried about the money that they have left. And Jesus is like, didn't Joanna, you know, do another donation? Is it, aren't, shouldn't we be fine? Basically. Um, and Judas is like, you can tell that he's more and more worried about the money side of things instead of just following the mission and doing what Jesus has asked them to do. Um, and so we're going to be able to see more of more, more and more of that kind of play out uh, in relationship there. So that should be interesting. I do wonder if there's a scene this season two of, um, of Judas actually stealing money. I, I expect to see that this season. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. 
some amazing big scenes. Hey, Marker. We saw enough to know this season is going to be spectacular. You will love what you see on screen. <laughs> now, that was during the week with all the extras. Um, I was there that week. It was a lot of fun. Um, really, really cool stuff that week for sure. But we can see there a bunch of the Sadducees and Pharisees right behind Andrew. Uh, and all the apostles are over there. Uh, so interesting scene. Definitely in Jerusalem since we're on the Jerusalem set. Uh, cool stuff. I think they're going to see some things that you, you know, you've read in the Bible, but we're doing it on a big level, on a big scale. And there's going to be a lot of scenes in season four to remember. Go back and watch again. I am excited. I 100% agree with that. Everything that we've seen from season four so far is going to be like, it's going to be awesome. Like there's so many biblical moments because the chosen is running out of time. So they, need, they needed to use the first like three seasons, two or three seasons to really build these characters, build the relationships and make it so that they were believable human beings. But now season four, five, six, and seven, I think it's going to be a lot of biblical moments. Of course, there's going to be extra biblical stuff put in there. They have to, in order to make it feel real and to make it come alive. Um, but because they're running out of time in these episodes, there's going to be so much more biblical content, I think, stuffed into it, which is going to be really amazing to see. It's going to be awesome to break down and talk about with you guys. So make sure you subscribe and, and, and we catch up then for sure. I for fans to see where this season takes us, not just in terms of the actual events that happen in the story, but where it starts us and where it leaves us at the end of the season in particular. I think it's going to be very exciting for people to see. Some of my favorite stories in the Gospels are told this season. I'm personally excited to see them come to life. I'm excited for them. Obviously, Mary and Martha there. I think a lot of people, um, let me know if you're excited. I know a lot of people are excited about the Mary and Martha storyline um, and everything going on there. And then, of course, we have our new uh, Philip Rezodiaco, uh, who I'm really excited to see how, how he turns out and what kind of goes on there them to see a lot more complex so it looks like here too i don't know if they've done this intentionally with lazarus's hair um but it looks like after the resurrection is lazarus's hair is kind of like picked out and almost straightened uh, off to the side but if we go earlier in this and i'll kind of come down um if we go earlier in this segment we can see that lazarus let me see if I can find it real fast right here. So Lazarus's hair is all curly. So my hair is very much like uh, Demetrius Troy's. And um, uh, so it's very similar where my hair will get very curly like this. And then I can pick it out to make it like frizzy and straight. So it looks like this is before the death and resurrection right here. It's a happen in the story, but. And then later on when his hair is like straight like that, we've seen specific scenes with him. Um that his hair looks like this and it's definitely after the resurrection uh, because his sisters are wearing black they're sitting shiva like it's it's a very touching scene between him and jesus and the sisters and so i think this is probably a conversation that's happening after that point maybe they're having dinner and just catching up and talking about the next steps i wouldn't be surprised if this is in episode eight uh in the finale of the season uh to kind of get him ready for you know going into holy week which we know is going to be season five so yeah it could be really interesting here uh for sure a lot more complexity and darkness throughout this season in a different way becomes a lot more relevant yeah so there's mother mary wearing the same exact clothes as she was wearing previously when she was washing jesus's hair this is them walking up to the the tomb right with mary and martha and mother mary you see all the apostles behind them um and jesus's hair may look a little bit wet here as well so maybe that continuity works there as well I'm not 100 percent sure but we can definitely see that mother mary is wearing the exact same clothing and she's wearing that same shawl that we've seen her in the behind the scenes in lazarus's house as well so um yeah all of that continuity works there for sure and to difficulties that you go through and trying to keep your spirit and your faith going strong despite those difficulties can i say like some really cool miracles making some mud spit mud <laughs> best kind of money. So this is what we talked about recently on the Snipe Life, the Pool of Siloam. Um, so this should be technically in in Jerusalem, uh, even though they shot this in the, the fake Capernaum. <clears throat> this should be in Jerusalem, and Jesus is sending this man with the mud to go wash in the Pool of Siloam. 
uh, and uh, and then basically to be cleansed and to, to cure his blindness um, for God's glory. Really, really cool story. I'm looking forward to see how they do that. If they show the Pool of Siloam, if they do all these different things, it would be really, really cool to see. So some really cool miracles. Reminiscent of season one, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I am most excited for the fans to see the unexpected challenges that the disciples and yeah. Jesus will face this season. I don't think they're going to see what's coming. Like always, we have some tricks up our sleeves. <laughs> yeah, I think he's absolutely right. I think um, looking at the hardships that the disciples would have gone through in scriptures that we don't really hear about, the mental and physical uh, issues that they would have had to overcome, I think is really important for us to kind of explore uh, for sure. The urgency, it feels a little bit higher this season. The stakes are higher. I know we say that every season, but it's true. So many people are going to relate to this season that I'm excited to see what, how they bring it into their own lives and, and learn from it. What are you looking forward to the most for fans to see? Episode Seven. Episode seven. <laughs> I think episode seven should be Lazarus. As uh, if I'm guessing correctly, it should be Lazarus uh, resurrection, which would be really, really, you know, cool. Obviously, I'm excited to see the uh, the everything that's surrounding it. So obviously, we know the biblical story, but I'd love to see the everything surrounding you know, Lazarus' death and resurrection. Maybe we found out what he died from. Different things like that that could be filled in and just fun to talk about. Seven's jam-packed yes. goodness yes it's almost impossible to narrow down like one or two moments i'm like mm -hmm. oh wait but there's this scene like oh wait there's that scene i'm like how do i pick <laughs> it's like choosing between your children like how do you do it i don't know i mean yeah, some might kind of be a little more favorite than others but you know still i'm like i don't know they each have their own unique Thing. I'm also delirious, and I don't know who I'm talking to at the minute. Where am I? Jonathan. Oh, hi. Well, we are back in Texas, but there is plenty more to come, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell. Very cool. Well, I'm excited for sure. Obviously, we probably won't get very many updates on the Chosen's YouTube channel, so this may be the last one for a while unless we get you know some other random things uh, upcoming, but I don't envision that really happening. The next big thing I expect from their YouTube channel is going to be the trailer for season four, which of course will go over here, dive into it with every single fiber of our being and talk all about it. So make sure you subscribe so we can do that. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this episode of The Chosen Sleuth, and we'll see you on the next one.